Welcome back to Normal Baseball. After a back-and-forth battle in Game 3 of the ALCS that ended with the Guardians on top, it seems like all the momentum is shifting into Cleveland's direction as the series continues. Lewis, what did you think of Game 3 of the ALCS with David Fry's walk-off home run? What uh, That might be another classic to add to the classic games that we've gotten this postseason. Could not believe my eyes. I lost my shit personally because yeah. I just... The fact that the last two innings panned out like that, you know, we'll, we'll talk all about that and everything else in the series, but the fact that that was the last two innings of the game was awesome. For, for lack of a better word, it was just awesome. Yeah, it was a pimp job too. It was right off the bat. You knew it was gone. And off Luke Weaver, who, you know, since becoming the Yankees closer has been arguably the best reliever in baseball, the most lights out shutout reliever in baseball. And they finally got to him. And yeah, in he a allowed big that way. to J Ram in game two, too. So yeah. He was, he was crumbling at the seams or ripping at the seams. I don't know what the wording is. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the Yankees really screwed. Well, the, the screw-up from Weaver was not the one to David Fry. Rather, it was the one to Big Christmas yeah. the inning before. But to get there, I mean, the, the Yankees were down in this game. They kind of felt like they had no life, or rather it, it kind of felt like they had no life watching the game. It, the bats were cold. They weren't scoring. And the Guardians bring in Emmanuel Classe in the eighth inning. And you think, all right, well, this one's probably over. It's Emmanuel Class A. He is going to shut down the Yankees. It's it's going to be the end of the game. And so, suddenly, he remembered that it's the playoffs and that he's apparently not allowed to be good in the playoffs. And Judge and Stanton go back to back, give the Yankees a 4-3 lead. All the momentum shifts. The, the stadium's almost drained. And it, it kind of felt like it was over at that point. Did you think that after Judge and Stanton Homer, this game was over? Honestly, I, I did. I was, wa- I was watching this with one of my friends, and we were watching it together. And I said that this has been electric. Thank you. Good night. And I turned off the team for the commercials. But I will say I did get sucked back in after I saw Jeff Pass and tweet out the words, Big Christmas. Yeah. I mean, that... That homer was absolutely ridiculous. The Yankees tacked on another one in the inning after in the top of the ninth. But down to their final out. Down to their final out. Big Christmas coming up. A guy who's not known, you know, to he, he doesn't start the games that often. He's a platoon guy. He wasn't even starting in this game. He came in as a, um, um, a pinch hitter. My bad. Came in as a pinch hitter. And just has probably the most clutch swing of their postseason so far for the guardians oh yeah totally yeah totally that first off let, let me just get let's call a spade a spade here coolest pimp job in the postseason since batista wow okay that's pretty hot take. i'll say it i'll be brave i'll be brave i'll say it that's a pretty hot take holy shit the, the whole reason why everyone makes such a big deal about Jose Batista's home run is because not only did he pimp the hell out of it, the entire stadium blew up and the ball went far. What happened with uh, Big Christmas over here? He pimped the hell out of it, the stadium blew up, and the ball went far. Like, everything about that moment, epic, electric, awesome. Loved it. Yeah, that was just his third at-bat of the series as well. And... and... He took full advantage of it. That thing was – it was crazy. Now I want to ask you this. Is the fact that the Yankees pitched Luke Weaver in game two, did that add to the fact that he didn't have as good of a performance in game three? I'm going to say no because they had the travel day. If it were like a back-to-back situation, I would say yes, but the travel day in between – I, Why you could put him in there it was fine. It was not like he pitched forty pitches in game two. But so. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that it did for a different reason. What's here? Even if it's not his arm is falling off, 
they're they saw him. You know what I mean? They they <laughs> saw him more when they didn't need to. There, in my opinion, yeah. there was no reason to pitch Weaver in game two. The Yankees were up by four runs. They were up by four runs in the in the top of the ninth inning, and they brought in their closer. I don't think there's any need for that. I don't. I I think they could have rode with someone else. It wasn't a safe situation, and it felt like the game was locked down anyway. I don't think they needed to bring in Weaver there. I I, I kind of took exception to that. Um, I I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that that. That could make sense to me. I, I do think that it was it, okay to bring in Weaver there. You want to keep your your arm warm and all that stuff, especially. He pitched in game one. Down. He right, pitched in game one. He pitched in game one. Pitched in game two. It made sense that he pitched in game two, in my opinion. That's just me. I can get what you're saying though. I, can I don't agree with your side too. Yeah, I don't think it made sense at all. I think I think you if you're up by four, why are you bringing in your closer in a game that you don't you don't need to bring in your closer? I get that it's the playoffs, but I just didn't agree with it. At all. Okay. And I also okay. didn't agree with in game three <laughs> bringing in Clay Holmes, a guy notorious in well, the season. I, hold on. Notorious in the regular season for completely blowing games when it really matters. And I get that he's been really good in the playoffs and he's been really good since you moved him out of that role. But maybe it's because he wasn't in that role anymore. So there was a little less pressure. Um, I will say. Those were the first earned runs of Clay Holmes' postseason career. Correct. I get it. I do get but, that. But also, you don't want to trot out Luke Weaver there again. And how like how much do you really trust all the other arms in your bullpen when it comes to, you know, com- being completely locked down in a walk-off situation? I don't know. And, you know, Aaron Boone, who has been a great manager throughout his Yankee tenure, tenure and hey, Yankee fans, come try to kill me for that because it's the damn truth. Like, he's been a great manager for the Yankees. He made a slip up, uh, I guess, or maybe he didn't trust his other guys as much as he trusted Clay Holmes. Well, I don't know what the reason was behind it in Game Three, but I, you know what? The Yankees being the nice guys, given 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 the Guardians fans something to cheer. Listen, I I think I, I I do think he didn't have a choice. Boone Boone did not have a choice because, like you said, you can't roll Weaver out there. And they already used all their other relievers, pretty much. They used all their high leverage relievers, so they, they he didn't have a choice. But it was just it was just ironic seeing the guy who you know they specifically took out of the closer role because he's he was just blowing way too many saves to to put him in in the extra extra innings and for him to give up a home run the way he did. There were two outs in that inning too, so both of the Guardians' clutch home runs came with two outs. Yeah. That's that's the Guardians being the Guardians. But now I, let me I actually expect nothing less. But now let me ask you this: Has has the momentum of that series, this series, completely shifted into the Guardians' control? They're home for the next two games, too. I don't want to say that it's completely shifted. However, if you're looking at it in terms of like on a on a balance scale, right? Yankees were on the floor. They were 100 percent in control of the series. I do think, though, it's gone, like, uh, if you include the fact that the Guardians are home for two more games, I think that it's, like, a 60-40 split. The Yankees are still in control of the series. They still have a game lead. By Um, literal terms, yeah, they're still in control because they're up a game. But I'm talking about momentum-wise, are they not in control of the series? uh, Not entirely. It depends on who's starting for the Yankees tonight. So tonight in Game Four, it is Luis Heel making his first ever postseason start against Gavin Williams, who was also making his first ever postseason start. All right, um, I like that. Simple, straight to the point. Luis Heel has been better in the regular season, so I'm going to say that the Yankees can really maintain momentum and control. Well, contain it from the Guardians because I do. Yes, uh, I misheard you. I do think the Guardians have more momentum. However, that momentum is very volatile right now. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I see. It could be stopped pretty easily. Um, if, I, I mean, if Luis Heel goes out there and goes five shutout innings, who really has the upper hand? You, you can't have you can't just replay the home run from last night on the video board. And say, that's oh true. God, that's true. But it's a clo- if it's a close game, they will bring in. I mean, I assume David Fry is probably going to start tonight. But I was going to, like, they have pretty good pinch hit 
bench bats. I mean, David Fry is a very good pinch hitter in in the um like tenth inning there. Like when you see David Fry coming up to the to the plate, it's not a walk in the park. It's not like um it's uh Austin Hedges coming up to the plate. Like David Fry's a really hey, good hitter. That's twenty twenty three World Series champion, Austin Hedges, please. That's true. And and by the way, Fry didn't pinch it in the, the tenth inning, that's my bad. He pinch hit an at bat before that. But you know what I mean. You, you get my point Push, there. Posh. I yeah, want to yeah. say that, that for the Yankees, I mean, if they really want to get the momentum back, they have to get to the, the starter. They have to get to Gavin Williams because yeah, we're, have a short leash, though. we're really seeing it that aside from the Hunter Gaddis and Emmanuel Classe blunders, the Guardians bullpen has been pretty locked down. They've like been the Guardians bullpen that we know. And I know I'm saying aside from their two, you know, best relievers, best relievers in the regular season, but those guys aren't going to be doing that every single outing. They're not going to be giving up two, three runs every outing. So when the rest of the bullpen is on and it seems like the good arms have already had their bad appearances, you got to get to the starter early. I don't think they have a choice. Yeah. But then again, the Guardians have Stephen Vogt, shout out Stephen Vogt, shout has out. been very, very good at managing his arms. And I do think that, you know, if the Guardian starter is put into even a little bit of trouble, I think genuinely his maximum range that he's going to go is two earned runs. I think that's as much as you can trust your starter if you are the Cleveland Guardians. And then go to your bullpen. This is a Cade Smith enjoying podcast here. We love Cade Smith. Shout out Cade Smith. He'll come in. You have Hunter Gaddis. Hopefully, Emmanuel Classe will stop throwing meatballs. Like, the Guardians bullpen is locked down. So, why not give your starter a very short leash and say, listen, first sign of real trouble, we're pulling you. First of all, that pitch to Judge was not a meatball. No, it was a great pitch. It was a great pitch. Not a meatball whatsoever. That's just Aaron Judge being a freak of nature, taking that to the opposite field ridiculous um but yeah no going back to your point of two earned runs i think there's definitely something in that especially with the guy who's making you know his first postseason um, what's his name i wanted to call him garrett stone but i think that's wrong garrett stone his name's gavin williams gavin so that's williams. nowhere close i don't know why i kept thinking garrett stone shout out the washington nationals anyway stone garrett yeah. is on the nationals um uh, yeah. but anyway uh yeah we saw a similar thing in game two with tanner bybee he went uh, inning and a third, but only gave up two earned runs. I mean, th- I'm shocked that he's not three starting runs tonight. On three days rest, he only threw twenty something pitches. Yeah, but but th- th- this is what I'm getting to there. You know, he only gave up two earned runs in game one, but they were hitting off him. They had they had five hits. Like, they had walked like they were getting they made on him base. Look like a number five starter, not a number one starter. There, yeah, there was just a lot of foot traffic and vote was not scared to pull him out of the game in the second inning. And I, I was surprised. But then, you know, they did that little interview um, in between innings that they do, and he, like, justified it. He was like, listen, they're getting hits off him. They're set. He's he's good. He was going to give up more runs if I left him in there. And he did the right thing, and he took him out. And until the Hunter Gaddis came in later in that game, they, the Guardians' bullpen held them down in game two. So yeah, I think I that's think, just the Guardians bullpen being the Guardians bullpen. I'm not I'm not trying to say that it's not that. I'm just saying that's that's why we could see something very similar in Game Three because he's already done or Game Four rather because cool. he's already done it and it's worked pretty well because if you take out that Hunter Gaddis homer to Judge, um, Guardians are in that game. Yeah, that's that's almost a tie game. Almost. No, it's a one run game if you take that yeah. out. So that changes the whole complexity of the game. Um, I don't know. If, if I am the Guardians right now, right, if I'm Steven Vogt, I'm saying I don't care about what happened. Like, you know, these guys have been locked down all season for me for a reason. Giving my starter a short leash, leash, excuse me, not leash, leash. And we'll figure out the bullpen situation as we always do. And hopefully the, the crowd can get behind us and really be that 10th man. I think that's what you that's what you have to just say if you're the Cleveland Guardians. If you're the Yankees, you are saying they took a win from under my nose. They stole it from us. We got the hits off of the big name guys. We were able to come up when it mattered most, and we could not close the door. 
we're getting our game back. It you know, does not matter. You know, I actually I happen to agree with that. I I wanted to mention, like you have. Like, Judge is only 2 for 10 in this series. Same with Giancarlo Stanton. But those two, or at least one of those two, were two really, really clutch home runs off the best closer in baseball this season. So it's like, yes, you lost, but there are still a lot of positives that came out of Game 3 in terms of we know we can hit off their best guys. We know we should have, like you just said, they stole that win from us. Like, we should have had that win. Because... Their bullpen's been so lights out all postseason. And then really last night was the first time we saw their bullpen kind of get rocked. So if you're looking from an off right. So if you're looking from an offensive side of things, you're like, listen, we're fine. I mean, we got hits when it mattered most. Sure sure we didn't, you know, run up the score. Sure we didn't score uh like ten runs like, you know, the Dodgers are doing on on the National League side of things, but we scored off their high leverage guys. We did it in game two as well. You know, Hunter, they Start took Hunter, their number one starter. Hunter Gaddis. Yes, we got to their number one starter. Like, things are looking good. It's just everything in the mid relief that we're having trouble with, really. That's what I'm seeing, at least. Yeah. And let, let it not go unnoticed, by the way, that Labor Torres is hitting over 300 since being moved to the leadoff spot. Shout out to Labor Torres. Yeah. That, that he's been a massive help for the Yankees. Usually a guy that. We see when the lineup is deflated, you can tell by watching a deliver Torres at bat in the leadoff spot. What has he been doing? He has been taking pitches. He's been taking his watch. He's waiting for the pitch that he wants to hit. And he's not just trying to drive the ball over the fence. He's getting the singles when he needs it. That is clutch as clutch gets. If you're a leadoff hitter, especially for the New York Yankees right now, Glaber Torres has absolutely turned my perspective around. Yeah. He, he, he's been great. he has settled into the, the, leadoff spot very very well um another guy in their lineup uh alex verdugo who i think has been a big help for them uh anthony yeah. volpe he, he yes he's a rookie but he's been playing really well in this series so far or rather uh uh this is the first okay. first go around in the postseason not a rookie second year but first go around in the postseason because they didn't make it last year and he's performing pretty well um it's it's really just you know getting judged to be consistent and i i honestly do truly think that if Jazz was getting on base consistently, they would be scoring a lot more runs. I think that there is a correlation there. Um, granted, you know, maybe his base running isn't the best at some points, as we saw in game <laughs> two when he got, um, what was it, picked off? Picked um, off. Two pickoffs in one inning at second base. What a weird thing to happen in the postseason. Their base running, the, the Yankees' base running has been horrible. I mean, all year it's been horrible. Uh, we saw those two in, in game two with Rizzo and then Jazz, but even in game three with Volpe, when Jimenez made that play and went to get Volpe at third, Volpe should have been out there. The, it, the, if J-Ram didn't bobble that ball, Vol, Volpe's out by a mile. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, that I mean, was Yankees bad base running, too. The broadcast keeps talking about it, how the Yankees were statistically one of the worst base running teams in all of baseball this regular they, season, and it's showing in... It's, it's like in bold now in the postseason because it has just been mistake after mistake after mistake. If you're Aaron Boone, you got to start thinking about in these late inning situations, I don't give a shit if it's Jazz Chisholm. Pinch run for something like pinch well, run John Dirty. They did like, that. I, they, they did that with well. Stanton. They did that with Stanton. He got walked and then they pinch ran Dominguez. Obviously, it didn't equate to anything, but yeah. at least you're acknowledging listen, like this is the late innings of a game. Yes, Stanton's a great hitter, but we need an actual person who can run the bases. So let's put in Jason Dominguez there. And that's exactly what they did. And I, I thought that was a really good move. Um, I thought that was a really good move there. Totally. But that that felt a little bit too too late. Rizzo's you know, been really good, too. I mean, he's only had seven at-bats, but he's three for seven. Yeah, but, uh, but, I mean, with those two broken fingers, his pain tolerance, like they were talking about it after game one and game two. Like, Aaron Boone's pulling him when Rizzo says, like, listen, dude, my hand hurts too much. Like, the fact that Rizzo is able to even be on the field is amazing. It is. And, but, you know, he didn't start game three, but there's a righty going for the guardian. Uh, um, sorry, Gavin Williams is a righty. So you can assume that Rizzo will be in the starting lineup today. I'd like to see what he's going to do with that yeah, opportunity. That, that means that John Birdie should be on the bench. Aaron Boone. 
Yes. Please. I, I pinch run John Birdie sometime during this game when it's when it matters. Right. Please. Unless they unless they blow him out, which I again I said that's what they're I think that's what they're gonna have to do in order to, you know, shift this the momentum. They're gonna have to get a blowout tonight. I said I said it oh, last night yeah. with the right after the walk off, I was like, All right, that was sick. Like that was a crazy oh, walk off. So but, awesome. but now if 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 you're the Yankees you have to get a blowout win. You can't have these close games because I don't know if they'll prevail in a close game. The Yankees can just because win of games. just well, they can, of course. I know they can, but I'm saying they're on the road now. They just blew a close game that they had to come back in. You thought they had momentum and they didn't. I think they need a blowout win in order to really just assert themselves in the series. I think it's really yeah. important that they do that. Yes. 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 I think, though. Austin Wells, by the way. What are we doing? Trying to pick it up. Yeah, they started Jose Trevino, by the way, yesterday. No, I know. Uh, I think from the Yankees' side of things, there is one goal and one goal only, and that is to tag up the starter as much as possible before the bullpen is ready. If that means blowout, Again. that means blowout. But I'm talking like. If you get three runs, count your fucking blessings and move on. Yeah, that goes like, back to what I was saying. You, know, you have to get to the starter at this point. You don't have an option. That's that's your outlet to win these games is to get to the starter. Yeah, and it's not like game one where the Guardians were using like their B-team relievers and the Yankees were able to work at bats and get hits. The Guardians are not going to do that anymore. Their bullpen's fully ready to go. They don't really have B relievers, though. That's the thing. They don't really that, have B tier relievers. Everyone those game one relievers. They were bringing them out. I was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" And then he was giving up three hits. But the Guardians' defense also has been amazing. Shout out to uh, Andres Jimenez for I don't... play at second, going to Josh Naylor. Josh Naylor's been great. Jose Ramirez <laughs> making some crazy plays. I'm not sure which game one you were watching. But in game one, the Guardians' bullpen gave up one hit. and what? And two earned runs. Ah, two earned. But it doesn't matter. I'm t- I, the point still stands that all their relievers are... Did I, did I just completely talk about the wrong game, though? I definitely think... All I their, I'm, I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is that none of their relievers are, are bums. None of them are just like, go throw them out because it's a blowout. You know, like they, all of those guys could pitch in, in important games, important innings. There's yeah, some more than others. By the way, definitely thinking about Mets relievers there. That's on me. <laughs> My fault. Okay. A guy that I do want to point out in their bullpen is Pedro Avila. Avila. Oh my God. He's been yeah. he's been insane. He's pitched four innings in the series, so he's pitched um in every game, I'm 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 pretty sure. And he's given up no runs, um, no hits. He has been electric. He got them out of the jam, uh, a jam last night um, in the late innings. So, Pedro Avila, Avila I'm going to give you a round of applause. Round of applause, Pedro Avila. And then well I just want to talk about a couple guys in their lineup, too, that I think we need to mention before we, we head out of here. Um, Brian Rocchio. Oh, my God. You would not think he's a rookie based on how he's been playing in these playoffs. Yep. He's, I would agree with you. He's 5 for 11 in this series. Uh, yes, he had that error in game two, but that's not on the offensive side of the ball. He's He's been great all playoffs. He was great in the DS, and he's playing really well in the CS. And I just wanna, I just wanted to point out, shout out to Brian Rocchio. I think um, he's playing above rookie standards for a for first-time playoff performer. Totally. I, I could not agree with you more. Shout out to Brian Rocchio. But shout out to honestly, like, Kyle Manzaro, of, too, another rookie. Yeah, Been all balling. of the Guardians that are not named Jose Ramirez, Lane Thomas, and David Fry, and Josh Naylor. Like, <laughs> those, besides those four guys, like, you would think, okay, Qua- you know, the lineup's navigatable. It's They've really made it hard. They have made it super hard. I think Except the bi- for Bo Naylor. Bo I Naylor w- is fucking terrible. I want to say the biggest thing for the Yankees has been neutralizing Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan's two for 12 in this series so far. Yeah, and he came in hitting 500 in the DS. Right. So, yes, while J-Ram is also two for 12, like, Quan is a guy who could hit 500 in a, in a 
five or six or seven game series. So neutralizing him like that has been huge for them because the more he's on base, the higher chance they have to score just because he's the type of guy, you know, he's their leadoff hitter. So hitting after him is, is the big names, the, the, uh, the J Rams and the, the Josh Naylor who Josh Naylor hasn't been good either. We were just, we were, we were talking about it right before we started, uh, uh, recording Josh Naylor got two hits, uh, in his first two at bats off Garrett Cole to start the series and hasn't had a hit since. So they've yeah. neutralized him well too. Um, it, it, the, the Guardians need their big bats to get in this as, if they want to win the series, in my opinion. They need J-Ram to start hitting. Yes, he homered in Game 2, but it was a 6-2 to two game at that point. Like, it meant nothing. Stephen Kwan needs to start getting on base more. Um, I, all in all, I Brian Rocchio is really... It, it's been their rookies that have that have been carrying them to the good parts of their games offensively, which is... A good thing, yes, but that's not necessarily what you want. When 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 Brian Rocchio, uh, Big Christmas, um, Kyle Manzaro are carrying you to to most of your runs, even David Fry, that's 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 not great. You you want you want your stars to be performing well. It's the same with the Yankees. Like they won Game One and Two, yes, Judge homered in Game Two, but he still wasn't getting that. Like he he still wasn't Aaron Judge. So that's still like a red flag that's going off, if that makes sense. Yes, and bef- I want to wrap it up here, and I got a, I did a pretty good question to ask you, and I want to hear your answer. If I told you I'm from the future and the Guardians win this series in seven games, who do you think are the top three performers for the Guardians? Uh, uh, I'd say Brian Rocchio. Okay. I would say David Fry. Right. And I would say Emmanuel Classe. Because if they're going to win these games, Emmanuel Classe is going to have to pitch with the game on the line a couple times, and he's going to have to be the shutout Emmanuel Classe that we know. Yeah. And alternatively, if I said that the Yankees won this series – in seven games, who we, who would you say their top performers would be? Garrett Cole. Or not Garrett Cole. Rodon. Rodon should have two starts. Uh, Aaron Judge, who has been sort of hot back-to-back games with the homer, which is pretty nice to see. He's also taking his walks more. And John Carlos Stanton, because John Carlo in the playoffs has a 1,000 OPS. Interesting. Interesting. I think we took those questions differently. Yeah. I think I took it more of a, like, if the Guardians came back and won this game, like, who would have had to been hot? Or, like, who do you think would have been the reason, the X factors? That's kind uh, of more how I took it. Not how, like, not, I didn't take it as, like, how they've played so far this postseason. I mean, it kind of lined up that way, but yeah, just different, but different reasoning. Different reasonings, but same conclusion. different ball clubs. So it makes sense that we're going to have completely different answers. No, but that's not what I meant. Not what I was trying to say at all. Right over your head. Anyway, <laughs> we're just going to have to watch, find out, see who the actual X Factors are. We'll find out as the games come. And for now, we just worry about game four. I mean, not worry, but enjoy game oh, four. A little, little Yankee fan crack him out there. We worry about game four. <laughs> no. Enjoy game four. We certainly will. Let's go baseball and, you know, let's see how these championship series shape out. Yes, we will do that. All right. So thank you guys for watching, listening, and all that. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.